Hey, what's up guys? In this video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a simple and easy to use reference guide to show you what radar bands are in use all around the country, X-band, K-band, and K-A-band, so that you can figure out how you should program your radar detector depending on where you drive, and also even give you a little bit more information to help you figure out which radar detector you should buy depending on where you live and drive. Let's do it. Now I've done a similar video like this before in the past, basically referencing RDFGS. That is a phenomenal user-generated resource where people report what radar guns, what laser guns they see all over the country, and it is an amazing resource that you can take a look at to figure out what's in use all around the country. Now, there's a ton of information here, and I basically wanted to make a simplified version of it that you could just take a look at and see everything at a glance. And that's basically what this guide is here. We've basically gone over all that stuff and simplified everything so that you can see immediately what radar bands are in use. Now, taking a look at this map, you'll see uh, in the whole country, there's three different colored states. Uh, the green states are the ones where you're going to see X-band, K-band, and K-A-band in use. The yellow states are the states where you're going to see K-band and K-A-band. And finally, if you take a look at the red states, really is just Northern California in this case, there's only KA band. There's no X band and there's no K band in use there. So this makes it really, really easy to tell at a glance, you know, what's in use everywhere that you drive. Now, something I noticed when I was creating this map, it is a little bit oversimplified. And here's what I mean. Uh, let's take a look at X band, for example. X band is a really old radar frequency, really big antennas, and it's phased out in most of the country. There's really only two states where it's still actively in use. That's uh, Ohio and New Jersey. The other states, yes, X-Band is in use. However, it's really only in like one or two small rural counties or cities in the middle of nowhere, you know? The map makes it look like it's in use in the whole state, but it's really uh, almost completely phased out and very rarely in use there. Similarly, when it comes to the yellow states, there's some states like Utah, for example, where uh, yes, K-Band is in use, but only, again, in some of the smaller rural cities. If you're on the highways, for example, you're only going to see K-A-Band. And so, in addition to this map, I'm going to post a link to RDF where all this discussion and creation process was happening. And if you take a look underneath the map, there's an addendum I put together where we're basically kind of again, making a simplified explanation for every state that tells you like, okay, it uses X-band, but really only in these areas, or it uses KA-band and K-band, but K-band is really not in use that much. Another great example is uh, Northern California. Up there, the red state, that's the one where uh, there's only KA-band. Additionally, if you take a look in the addendum with the more information, there's only 34.7 and 35.5. So for those of you guys running a red line, for example, you can segment your detector, you could actually turn off uh, segment 2 and only scan for 34.7 and 35.5. So run only segments 5 and 8. Really helpful information. Speaking of which, uh, in Northern California, if you wanted to run a unit in detector, that may actually be a great choice. You see the CHP, the California Highway Patrol, they only run 34-7 stalker guns, and that's actually the strong suit for the Uniden. So, for example, if you wanted to get the Uniden DFR-6, that detector doesn't have a GPS chip, it doesn't have a lot of filtering capabilities on K-band, but if you're going to be turning off K-band entirely, that detector is really good at 34-7, and so in Northern California, the DFR-6 could actually be a great choice, just like actually the Magnum or the Redline. Those are also high-performance detectors without a lot of really good K-filtering options, and if you're in that area, that could be a really good option. Uh, the unit in it's $200 as opposed to closer to $400 or $500, so it's a nice way to save some cash. Now, speaking of the Unidens, they're strong on 34.7, not as much on 33.8 or 35.5 like the Red Line and the Magnum. Additionally, on X-Band, it's actually kind of weak. So if you are in the green states where X-Band is in use, especially Ohio and New Jersey, where it's in very active use, you may want to consider skipping the unit in detectors like the DFR-6 and the DFR-7 and maybe go for a detector like a Max or a V1 or a Red Line that has better X-Band performance. So taking a look at this map, you're going to be getting some useful information about what bands are in use everywhere that you can drive, where you can safely turn on and off different bands, and even get a little bit more useful information to help you determine which radar detectors you should buy. If you have a lot of K-band in use where you're driving, you're going to want something with good uh, blind spot filtering, and you're going to want something with, uh, you know, especially if you're in the city, GPS lockouts and low speed muting. So you're going to want a detector with a GPS chip like the DFR-7 or the MAX or the MAX-360 or... If you've got a detector like the Redline or the V1 that doesn't have a GPS chip built in, 
you may actually want to pair it with your phone and use your phone's GPS and an app to help you get the GPS lockouts and the additional filtering that you want on K-Band, right? So basically taking a look at this map, you can see it's going to give you a bunch of really useful information. Uh, now again, I'm going to be posting a link in the video description to this whole discussion on RDF where uh, the addendums are available with the descriptions for every state. If you'll notice here, um, there's information for some of the states, but not all of the states have been filled out yet. Uh, I'm basically going through and creating a simplified version of the RDFGS, essentially, and this information is actually coming from you guys. You guys ask me all the time, you know, I live in such and such state, how should I program my detector? And I'm like, well, let me go take a look at this resource, right? I don't know, I don't drive there firsthand, I'm depending on you guys. So, this information is actually coming from you guys, it's coming from other radar detector users who live and drive and are really familiar with those specific areas. If you see anything in here that's left out and you can provide some additional information, please do. Hop on the thread there on RDF and contribute what you know. Um, again, this is not intended to be a replacement to the RDFGS. That is a very in-depth fantastic resource with a lot more information that I have listed here. That's going to include what radar guns, what laser guns are in use in those areas, if you need to run TSR or not, things like that. So that's a much more in-depth resource and that's also going to be maintained a lot better. That's going to continue to be updated over time this resource that I'm creating, I'm basically just kind of creating it and it should be pretty much done once I get it all completed, right? The RDFGS is going to be continued to be maintained over time, so that's another resource that this is basically a simplified version of it. The RDFGS is the complete reference. So anyways, just wanted to go ahead and show you guys this. I've been working on it for a little while now. A big, big thank you to everybody on RDF who's been helping create this with me. And uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask here in the uh, comment section on YouTube or maybe better yet, Hop onto the thread on RDF, read over everything there, and you're going to get a bunch more useful information there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been helpful. And uh, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.